right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a fire effect in 3ds Max. So this is a very basic effect if you already know how to make fire and render it with all these beautiful details, then this tutorial is not for you. But if you want to get an idea of what we're going to be working with, uh, this is what we're going to try and create. Now granted, this is a um, this is an animation, it's not a still frame, but we can hopefully try and get you there if you're looking for a still frame. So I'm going to go ahead and put this off to the side for now, and we're going to start from the beginning. So what I want you guys to do is you're going to go over to your Create tab, and you're going to go over to your Helpers tab, and in the drop down, you want to go to Atmospheric Apparatus. So under Atmospheric Apparatus, you have a series of gizmos. Um, for this one, we want a um, sphere gizmo. So I'm going to go to the middle of my grid here. And if you wanted to have a fire that was the shape, then that would be totally fine. But I'm going to show you how to make it more of a tendril and have like a billowing flame. So what we can do here is I am going to go ahead and I'm going to go to my um, select a non-uniform scale. If you do not have this button, then you're going to click and hold and you are going to go to the button that has the two arrows on it. And we're going to drag this up along the z-axis until we hit about 250. So I can also just go down here under my z and type in 250, and then we're going to have this tendril. Um, notice that you can also stretch it along the y, um, you can stretch it along the x, and you have a handful of different combinations that you can work with. So I might make this a little bit bigger. Um, let's go like that. Just for fun. You can make this whatever size you want. All right, excellent. So now what we want to do next is we want to actually add the fire effect. So if I click on my gizmo and I go to my modify tab, you're going to see that I can add my atmospheres and effects here. Um, so, oh, sorry, just to back up, you can also make this a hemisphere and just concentrate it on the top. So, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So let's go over to our atmospheres and effects with my gizmo selected, and I'm going to go over to add. Under add, I'm going to add my fire effect and say OK. Now we're not done yet. If we click on the fire effect, we have to go to setup, and that's where we're going to edit some of the parameters. So now I already have a fire effect in here because my other gizmo is still in my scene. But if we select my most current fire effect and scroll down, you're going to see that we have a few different options. So now I don't need to pick my gizmo because I already did that over here in the Sphere Gizmo Modify tab, but I can change some of the parameters over here. So um, some of these take a little bit of playing around with. There's no exact recipe, um, but let's go ahead and change the stretch here to 0.8. Um, the regularity here, um, let's just go ahead and set that at one. I'm just gonna go ahead and take a peek over at my other fire effect and see what we did here. Okay, maybe we'll keep that at point two. Uh, the regularity refers to um, how crazy or how noisy your flame is going to be. So if it's at one, which is your maximum value, um, it's going to be pretty standard. It's going to be a fairly dense regular flame. So let's just go ahead and put this at point two. Um, I'm going to decrease my flame size down to about 18. Uh, it doesn't need to be much bigger than that. If you want to increase your flame detail, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, let me just check out what some of my other parameters here. Um, and then let's just go ahead and increase the density to 30 so you can get a similar effect as in the uh, example I showed you earlier. So again, depending on what you want your scene to look like, um, a lot of this can vary. So I'm going to go ahead and also increase my flame detail. Let's see what that looks like. So if I were to just go ahead and render this now, let's go to my render setup and make sure I'm on my active time segment here and just change this to single. Um, sorry, this is overwriting my old file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say fire test one and save this as a JPEG. You don't need to do this. And let's say render. Um, this is what my flame currently looks like. So that looks pretty cool. Um, I'm digging it, but let's add some animation to it. So this is where this rollout is really awesome. So the phase is going to control 
um, how fast your animation is or how fast your flames are moving around. So for example, if you have a campfire, um, you might want your phase to be a little bit higher, um, which is going to be a um, crazier, stronger fire, whereas a slower phase amount is going to result in a slower, calmer file, fire. For example, 500 is going to be a crazy fire. Um, something more like 50 is going to be a really calm fire. Um, drift is also going to change the irregularity along the z-axis. So how much does your flame change along the z or the vertical axis? So I'm going to go ahead and put this phase at 100. It'll be a little bit slower than this flame tendril over here. And I'm also going to put my uh, drift at 100. So again, go ahead and play around with this. So just as a recap of my different values, I put my stretch at 8, 0.8, my regularity at 0.2, my flame size at 18, my density at 30, my flame detail at 5, uh, my phase is at 100, and my drift is at 100. So to actually record this animation in the phase, I'm going to turn on auto key. Um, here, I'm going to make my phase 0. I'm going to make my drift 0. And I'm going to move it all the way over to the end of my time slider. I'll make my phase 100. And I'll make my drift 100. And you're going to see that this is actually already recorded in there, um, hence the little boxes. So I'll turn off auto key, and we'll be good to go there. So it's not going to show up in my animation preview, but you can see that as I'm going along, um, my phase and my drift are updating. So let's go ahead and animate it. Um, I'm also going to do one last thing and change this to a tendril, but you don't have to do that. So let's go to my rendering, render setup. Um, let's render my active time segment, so it's going to be 0 to 100. Um, I want to save this file as an AVI, so I'm going to do this fire test 2. I'm going to save it as an AVI and say save. save. Um, scan line render is going to uh, render this really quickly. If you have other Autodesk material, materials in your scene, you're going to want to make sure it's set to mental array. But scan line is good for now. So I'm going to go ahead and say render. And we will wait for all of that to process, and then we will compare it at the end. All right, so now that that's done rendering, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is the one that we just created. Um, again, you're going to see that it's a little bit slower than um, the one that we recorded over here. So that can be changed based on your um, phase and drift. This one is also tapered a little bit at the bottom, um, and that's just because of my uh, the way that my gizmo is shaped. So we made this one into a hemis hemisphere. So it cut off the bottom, um, so you can see a little bit that a little bit of this flame cut off. If you prefer something that's more elongated, um, you can go ahead and keep the tendril there. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And thank you for watching.